Welcome to Audit the Audit, where we sort out the who and what and the right and wrong of police interactions. This episode covers fix-it tickets, nervous behavior, and use of force, and is brought to us by Flex and Ruse channel. Be sure to check out the description below and give them the credit that they deserve. Before we dive into the interaction, I want to give a big thanks to the sponsor of this episode, Surfshark. We all know Surfshark is one of the most secure VPN services on the market that offers its users privacy, anonymity, and security while online. But a Surfshark subscription also comes with a ton ton of other features to enhance your browsing experience. One of the many perks included with a Surfshark subscription is the ability to bypass region restrictions on popular platforms like YouTube and Netflix, and view content that is not normally available in your country. Thanks to Surfshark, I can still watch my favorite episodes of The Walking Dead, even though it was removed from the US Netflix catalog. A Surfshark subscription is totally unlimited, which means that you can use it on as many devices as you like, and even on all of them at once. No other VPN service offers that much accessibility. Right now, Surfshark is offering the ATA community an 83% discount with an additional three months completely free. With 24-hour customer service and a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have absolutely nothing to lose. So click the link in the description to claim your exclusive offer now. Thanks again to Surfshark for sponsoring this episode. In November of 2018, multiple officers from the Sacramento Police Department, including Officer Sarah Stambaugh, pulled over local businessman and barber Rudy Ornelas for a window tint violation violation and the lack of a front license plate. Mr. Ornelas recorded the stop and posted the original video to his YouTube channel. And the text that you see throughout that video was edited by Mr. Ornelas and not supplied by this channel. Hey, what's up? How's it going? Hey, how you doing? Good. Hey, um, I'm stopping you because you got no front plate and your window tint's too dark. Uh, I actually got to fix a ticket for this one. Did you? Uh, it was two weeks ago. I got stopped on Arden right there by Hostess. Can you roll down that window factory. for partner, please? Uh, <laughs> Thank you. So you got a you got a ticket for the, the tent already? Yeah. Okay. And I did. Back. I did. Hey, how you doing? Uh, all the way down. Do I got to? Because I just told you to. No, I'm saying I got it right. I count that up. For my safety. And for my safety also. Okay. This is all being audio recorded, by the way, too. Okay, that's fine. It's right yeah. here too. Okay. Okay, so you got to fix the ticket for the window tent. I got a uh, fix ticket for that too, also. And the front plate. And which is not due until. Uh, I don't know. I got to take that down. So. Okay. Mr. Ornelas informs the officers that he has already been cited for the violations he's being stopped for and was issued a fix-it ticket. Under Section 4610 of the California Vehicle Code, when a citizen is pulled over for an offense that is correctable, such as a mechanical requirement for a vehicle, a Notice of Correction Violation, more commonly known as a Fix-It Ticket, should be issued. The citizen has 30 days to have the mechanical issue corrected and submit proof of the correction to the court to have the ticket dismissed after paying a small administrative fee. Within those 30 days, the citizen cannot be ticketed for the same infraction. On its own, Mr. Ornelas' statement that he had been issued to fix a ticket was likely insufficient to dispel the officer's suspicions that he had violated the traffic code. And even if it was, a court would likely conclude that the officers were still within their authority to run certain checks related to their duty of ensuring that vehicles on the road are operated safely and responsibly. In the 2015 case of Rodriguez versus United States, the Supreme Court held that, quote, beyond determining whether to issue a traffic ticket, an officer's mission includes ordinary inquiries incident to the traffic stop. Typically, such inquiries involve checking the driver's license, determining whether there are outstanding warrants against the driver, and inspecting the automobile's registration and proof of insurance. Here, a court would most likely find that the officers had reasonable suspicion to stop Mr. Ornelas due to the tinting issue and the missing license plate, as they were not aware that the fix-it ticket had been issued at the time of the stop. Similarly, a court would probably conclude that the officers did not exceed the scope of their authority by detaining Mr. Ornelas while they ran warrant checks and conducted other routine traffic stop tasks. All right, you yeah. need driver's license, sir? Uh, yeah, it's my backpack in the back. Okay, here, I'll just take your name for a second. All right. What's your name, sir? Uh, Rudy, R-U-D-Y. What is it? R-U-D-Y. R-U-D-Y. Uh. And what's your birthday? Uh, just to make sure I got the last name spelled right. All right, you have a valid driver's license. Correct? Yeah, everything, okay. insurance, good, registered. Okay, all right, so. probation, parole, anything like nah, that? Nothing? Yeah, okay, yeah. you can get the registered owner of the car? Yeah. Okay, yeah. all right, sit tight for me, okay? I'll be right back. Right. So you said for your safety? Yeah, for my safety. Yeah. I know I want you to keep your hands in, my, in your lap for my safety, okay? Yeah, no problem. I'm yeah, sorry? I said no problem. Feels like I'm back in Nazi Germany or something. The way you people get treated like this. You know? Do you know your history? I do. Okay, so you understand what I'm saying? No, I don't. You don't understand don't. Nazi Germany? I don't see the correlation. 
Okay. We were hailed by a citizen regarding your car. Why would a citizen have hailed us? For my car? Yeah. Uh, I mean, whatever y'all got going on, you feel me? I don't know nothing about that. We were doing something completely else. And oh. somebody took time out of their day to come over and flag us down regarding you. Why Reg would regarding that? me? Regarding you and your vehicle. No, that's, that's false. Any weapons in the vehicle? Uh, yeah. What kind of weapons? It's, this is a registered firearm in my name. Okay. Yeah, Smith & Weston. This is also, you know, got the business under my name too, so. Just go ahead and keep your hands on the steering wheel. Yeah. Registered to him? Okay, yeah, he just, I just saw a girl's head. Okay. All right. Uh, I didn't get that far. Okay. He came back. He okay. says he's not. Where, where's it at? It's in the trunk. It's in the trunk? Yeah. Okay. You good with him for a second? Can I talk to you for one second? Just keep your hands on the wheel, okay? Officer Stambaugh asks to speak with the other responding officer and tells him that she feels unsafe because of the potential presence of a firearm in the vehicle and Mr. Ornelas' alleged nervous behavior. Although reasonable suspicion is not required for an officer to order an individual out of a vehicle during a lawful traffic stop, courts have often held that nervous or evasive behavior can contribute to reasonable suspicion in other circumstances. For example, in Illinois v. Wardlow, the Supreme Court noted that, quote, our cases have also recognized that nervous, evasive behavior is a pertinent factor in determining reasonable suspicion, and concluded that an individual's unprovoked flight upon noticing police officers in a high crime area was sufficient to create the reasonable suspicion necessary to conduct a Terry stop. However, in the 2001 case of U.S. v. Chavez Valenzuela, the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals, which has jurisdiction over California, held that because encounters with police officers are necessarily stressful for law abiders and criminals alike, quote, nervousness during a traffic stop, even the extreme nervousness exhibited here, in the absence of other particularized objective factors, does not support a reasonable suspicion of criminal activity, and does not justify an officer's continued detention of a suspect after he has sat satisfied the purpose of the stop. In this situation, it is unclear why Officer Stambaugh believed that Mr. Ornelas was behaving in a nervous manner, as, although he had voiced displeasure with the way he was treated, he did not manifest any sort of fear or anxiety. Still, even if his behavior could be interpreted as nervous, given the fact that even extreme nervousness on its own does not authorize an officer to extend a traffic stop, a court would almost certainly rule that reasonable suspicion did not exist if the issue became relevant to this encounter. Just because you got a firearm in the car, okay, we're just gonna do this the safe way, okay? So, what I need you to do, can you undo your seatbelt for me? Uh, can I call the supervisor, please? What? I would like your well, supervisor. You can talk to him afterwards. Sir, I would like your supervisor. Okay, we're, we're gonna talk to him afterwards. Right? I, that, you I need, need to do what well, I Can you call you him on do. your radio? Huh? Can you call him on your radio? He's not hey. trying to call hey. his supervisor on the radio. Listen. I'm just, we're, we're okay, I'm, to... I'm a citizen too, bro. Okay. It's like, hey. and, you, and you work for public and safety. You, you're doing your hey. job. What, what's your what's hey. your cause? Hey. Of, what's your calm, cause? Calm down. Calm down. What's your cause of stopping me? Is what I want to know. You didn't even give me a cause. You said I, for your tent. I told you I got that's a probable ticket. cause to pull you over, right? Okay. Just because you. Whoa, okay. whoa, that's way whoa. As Mr. Ornelas is voicing his objections to the traffic stop, Officer Stambaugh removes her duty weapon from its holster and points it directly at Mr. Ornelas' head. Under Section 835A of the California Penal Code, quote, Any peace officer who has reasonable cause to believe that the person to be arrested has committed a public offense may use objectively reasonable force to effect the arrest, to prevent escape, or to overcome resistance. 
The statute also states that, quote, the authority to use physical force is a serious responsibility that shall be exercised judiciously and with respect for human rights and dignity and for the sanctity of every human life. The decision by a peace officer to use force shall be evaluated carefully and thoroughly in a manner that reflects the gravity of that authority and the serious consequences of the use of force by peace officers in order to ensure that officers use force consistent with law and agency policies. Additionally, the statute requires that the decision by a peace officer to use force, quote, be evaluated from the perspective of a reasonable officer in the same situation based on the totality of the circumstances known to or perceived by the officer at the time, rather than with the benefit of hindsight, and that the totality of the circumstances shall account for occasions when officers may be forced to make quick judgments about using force. Under the Sacramento Police Department's use of force policy, which is based upon Section 835A, pointing of a firearm at a person is considered to be a use of force. And the policy states that, quote, when feasible, peace officers shall attempt to de-escalate situations. However, Section L of the policy clarifies that, quote, nothing in this policy shall preclude a peace officer from drawing of a firearm when the officer reasonably believes it necessary for the safety of the officer or another. Here, Officer Stambaugh's actions are in clear violation of the department's use of force policy and California law. Mr. Ornelas was not being arrested, and his verbal opposition to the traffic stop in no way threatened anyone's safety. Officer Stambaugh made no attempts to de-escalate the situation before drawing her weapon and unnecessarily escalated a verbal argument to a serious physical altercation that caused Mr. Ornelas to fear for his life. The reason that Officer Stambaugh believed that drawing her weapon was necessary and what she was attempting to accomplish are not immediately apparent, but it is more than challenging to imagine an explanation for her conduct that would lead a court to conclude that this was a reasonable use of force. Are you serious? your fingers on the back of your head. We've got code three cover Whoa. Okay. Uh, do your seatbelt with your right hand. Oh, We're wow. Not play this game, sir. Hey, it's all good. Yeah, I don't know. It's all you good. Forward towards the seat. Right. Three, Wait, this way? Right, sorry, towards the steering wheel. You want to touch the door? Yep. All right, do not move. Got it? Top out. This car. Wow. Yeah, I was ready to do this low key. Yeah, low key, putting the gun to my head. Hey, hey, the gun. You want to put the gun to my head, all right? That's crazy. In a separate video posted to his channel, Mr. Ornelas explained that after he was forced out of the vehicle at gunpoint, handcuffed, and placed in the back of a patrol vehicle, the officers searched his vehicle without his consent. During the search, the officers recovered the registered firearm that Mr. Ornelas admitted to having in the trunk, and Mr. Ornelas was ultimately charged with carrying a loaded firearm in public. The charges were eventually dismissed after Mr. Ornelas retained a lawyer because, as he put it, it was an illegal search, and the police had no right to search his vehicle. According to Mr. Ornelas, Officer Stambaugh was promoted to detective at some point after this incident, and he has not mentioned any plans to pursue legal action. Overall, Officer Stambaugh gets an F for unnecessarily drawing her weapon during a purely verbal confrontation, making absolutely no attempt to de-escalate the situation before resorting to force, and violating both the Sacramento Police Department's use of force policy and California law. The other officers on the scene also get an F for failing to intervene when Officer Stambaugh drew her weapon. And the Sacramento Police Department gets an F for standing behind her actions, failing to discipline her, and even promoting her after this incident. By pointing her weapon at Mr. Ornelas's head, Officer Stambaugh displayed a complete lack of respect for Mr. Ornelas, his First Amendment rights, and his life, and demonstrated that she either did not consider the seriousness of her actions and the impact it would have on Mr. Ornelas, or that she did not care. As Section 835A of the California Penal Code explicitly states, the authority to use physical force that is granted to police officers is a serious responsibility. And by drawing her weapon over such a minor incident in order to silence Mr. Ornelas's complaints, Officer Stambaugh demonstrated a blatant indifference to the potential consequences her actions could have on Mr. Ornelas. Even if she never intended to fire the gun, pointing it at Mr. Ornelas's head was an extremely reckless and dangerous act that could have resulted in a serious injury or even death, not to mention the serious psychological and emotional impact that the threat of lethal force with a firearm can have. This encounter illustrates how easily the authority to use force can be abused by officers who do not have an adequate appreciation for the power they wield by carrying a firearm, and how use of force policies are rendered ineffective when there are no consequences for officers who violate them. 
Mr. Ornelas gets an A, because although he did tactfully express his displeasure with the stop, he was well within his First Amendment rights to do so, and he maintained a respectful demeanor throughout the interaction, calmly informed the officers that he had a registered firearm in the trunk of the vehicle, and in no way behaved in a manner that was physically threatening or warranted the use of any force by the officers. Even though Mr. Ornelas was not injured physically, it is important to note that he was still the victim of excessive force, and the psychological pain caused by his experience should not not be ignored or minimized. This interaction has the potential to dramatically impact Mr. Ornelas's perspective on members of law enforcement going forward, and it would be difficult to blame him for viewing officers through the lens that was crafted during this encounter. Not only was Mr. Ornelas impacted by this interaction, but it may also affect the encounters that he has with law enforcement in the future. It is important for officers to bear in mind that their conduct not only reflects on themselves and their respective department, but it also has the potential to affect other officers and departments that are totally unrelated to the events at hand. I commend Mr. Ornelas for maintaining his composure while being wrongfully forced to fear for his life and for having the courage to fight the criminal charge against him and win. Let us know if there is an interaction or legal topic you would like us to discuss in the comments below. Thank you for watching, and don't forget to check out my second channel for even more police interaction content.